well, I got a bunch of new grid tie inverters in here for repair. Looks like uh, most of them are these 300, 250 watt, 300 early sun grid tie inverters, and then one of these CTP 1000s to check out. So let's find out what's wrong with each one of these. All right, I got the first one open here. It's just a matter of taking four screws off of each end plate and then looking inside <clears throat> capacitor over here doesn't look popped fuse still looks in good shape so I'm gonna apply some power to it and see what it's doing this is the 10.8 to uh, 30 volt uh, Sun 300 G all right I've got DC power connected up to it to my uh, voltage source over there I just got it sitting at six volts currently AC coming out the other side just going into the wall <clears throat> you'll see initially nothing's happening I'm gonna crank the you see the lights down there a little bit <clears throat> crank the voltage up see the light starts to blink a little bit it's as the voltage is coming up when I get up to over the threshold about 12 you can see that red light on is on that's usually a sign that the AC side over here so the the circuit that the microprocessor works on is actually works off the DC side coming in from your solar panels or your whatever you have connected to it <clears throat> so it's indicating it's not able to that red light means it's not be able to function creating the AC to go out to the grid that usually means this brown uh, fuse right here is blown so I'm going to take this apart and verify that to take it apart you just remove four screws from each side there's a little bracket holding uh, the uh, components against the sidewall there. Those are the hot components. So do all that and then the whole circuit board will slide right out. Alright, this is what it looks like with the uh, case off. Then we're going to put the board over. we we'll find the traces for this uh, surface mount fuse and just to verify that it's blown. Alright, here's the two points right here. I'll just for my meter's beeping says my probes are good. Go between these two points. Nothing. That means the fuse is blown. So I know the fuse is blown. Now the next thing is to check the the MOSFETs to find out which one is shorted that caused that fuse to blow. Because if I just change the fuse, most likely if I turn it on, it would blow again. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to probe from left to right the two outer contacts on each of these MOSFETs. These four on this side are the DC MOSFETs. These four are the AC MOSFETs. We're looking for consistency in our resistance on these four. They should be around 12K ohms. And then on these four, <clears throat> we're looking for basically an open circuit, so it won't you know, be... Uh, you know a meg ohm or higher and if it's any of them are less than that uh, significantly less than it, that'll point to the one that's shorted on that side so I'm gonna set up the meter so you can see the numbers and then I will walk my way through each of those separately and call them out for you okay so it's reading uh, ohms there now it's basically infinity because the probes are not connected now I'm gonna go on the leftmost MOSFET Probing it right now. Should auto range down to about 12k ohms. Looks good. I'll go to the next one. 12k. Okay, I'll go to the next one. 12k. Go to the next one. All right. So those four DC MOSFETs are good. I'm gonna probe the first AC MOSFET. It's reading 3.8, 3.8 ohms. So that's almost a dead short. Go to the next one. It's reading 786k ohms. The next one, 1200k ohms. The next one, 4.4 meg ohms. So at a minimum. The first AC MOSFET is shorted, so I'm going to change that out and see where we go. So, yep, it's reading 
four ohm, so that one's definitely dead. You can see down there, this is where the AC fuse is, and it's got some kind of burn marks on it. And sure enough, I verified it. After I pulled it out, and it was shorted. And I got the MOSFET taken out of here. All right, got everything buttoned back up again here. DC sides connected up. AC sides connected up. I got a kilowatt meter reading here. <clears throat> reading in watts. And so if I crank this up, we'll see if the boogie lights start boogieing. And whether we uh, start grid tying some power. I'll start cranking the voltage up here. Okay, the red light blinking. It's now out. <clears throat> the boogie lights are boogieing down there. And we are generating watts. You can see we're pulling power on this side. Three and a half amps. I don't want to stay off of the heat sink that long. But it shows me that we've got this one fixed. So I'll button it back up. Run it on my system for a while. And then move on to the next one. Alright, got it all buttoned up. We'll do a final check here. Start cranking up the voltage. The red light starts blinking at about 7 volts. Light goes out, starting to boogie. Reading uh, about 34 watts, 3 to 4 amps on the uh, meter there. We're good to go. All right, here's the next one. <clears throat> Everything looks pretty good. So I'm gonna have to take it, uh, connect it up, see if I can see another problem. All right, got it connected up. We'll look down at the lights here. I'll crank the voltage up, we're at zero now. About seven volts, light starts blinking. Go steady at about 12 or so. And the green lights are not moving. We are connected. We aren't getting in watts. Most likely, again, fuse is blown. One of those AC MOSFETs are blown over here. All right, let's check it out. All right, got this one opened up. I already checked the fuse. Sure enough, it's blown. And now I'm going to probe down the line here just like I did on the last one. So again, I'm going left to right. First one's at that 13 3K ohms. Next one. 13 3. Next one. 13 2. Next one. 13 2. So all those DC FETs are good. What we're basically reading here is a little resistor that's uh, uh, connected to this MOSFET. And it basically is indicating that they're not shorted. So I'm going to go now to Q8, which is the leftmost AC one. <clears throat> so it's reading 6 meg ohms, so that's open, which is good. Next one's reading 5 meg ohms. Next one is reading 1.2 meg ohms. And the last one, which is Q9, look at there, it's reading 94 ohms. So that's the one that's shorted, or close to a short. Yep, so that's the one that needs replaced. So place the fuse in that MOSFET, and this one will probably be fixed. Alright, and I got this one back together, got the new parts in. There was this uh, Q9 MOSFET over here, and uh, AC fuse. Got the DC source over there. Got my kilowatt meter. So we're going to crank this up. We look down here at the lights. I'd say about seven, there it is, about seven to eight volts. The red light will come on saying the, we're low on the voltage in. Looks like it goes off right around 12. 
then it goes off and the boogie lights are starting to boogie down there I think yep, there they are <clears throat> and we're generating power into the grid and we're doing 3.6 amps just like if we had a oh, 60 watt solar panel connected or something so that looks good we'll put this one back up just like the other one and put it into the system for a bit so make sure it all works and go from there all right here's another one got it opened up the capacitor looks good everything looks good on these they're all about the same uh, built about the same time it looks like okay we'll scope it up all right got it all connected crank this up come on lights here red light comes on about seven get up to 12 stays on steady no boogie lights Probably the same thing, that AC fuse down there and one of those MOSFETs. Okay. Alright, the last one had the same problem as the prior ones. Here's another one I opened up. Uh, what I noticed when I was debugging it is the lights were... The red light went out when I turned up the power over there. Uh, the green light started to boogie, but there was nothing going through to the kilowatt meter. So I took it apart. Uh, in fact, the red light was out. It says that the AC side's probably okay. Something's wrong on the DC side. So I take it off and look at what I noticed down in the bottom of this case here. There's a burn mark <coughs> below the circuit board, obviously. So some of the leads here were touching the case. I can feel there's some, some stuff protruding out. So I'm going to find out what parts are bad there and replace those and see if I get it back working again. Alright, I did find a, a burned out resistor on the bottom side that I replaced. Now I'm going to check the MOSFETs again. I already checked the AC fuse in the center there. And that's good, which is a good sign. So I'll walk you through going left to right again on the uh, MOSFETs. <clears throat> so here's the first MOSFET, number Q6. You can see it's reading one ohm so that's a dead short that one needs to be replaced the next one reading 1.4 ohms so that's a dead short that one's bad third one reading around 12k that's what i want that's good so that one's good the fourth one again around 12k so that one's good and here's the first ac mosfet should read over a meg ohm yep it's reading six meg ohms so that's like an open circuit so that's not shorted Next one is reading around 6 mega ohm. That's good, not shorted. The third uh, AC MOSFET is reading uh, over a mega ohm, 1.3. And the last one, Q9, is reading 1.3 also. So it looks like it's just the first two, these first two uh, <coughs> DC MOSFETs on this side. I'll replace those and we'll get this guy back working again. Best way to replace it is just clip the leads on the part and uh, unsolder leads separately. You'll be good to go. Alright, the next one's this 1000 watt CTP unit. See, it's got three uh, DC fuses on the DC side here. And. Uh, <coughs> Just an AC and on off switch and a green and red light. So we'll see what it looks like when I open it up. So here's what the inside of one of these looks like. You have the DC coming in, feeding the main board through this set of fuses here. And then the ground from the DC side. So these are all buck and buck uh, inverters to generate a uh, square wave, high voltage square wave through these transformers feeding out to the AC side and uh, there's diodes and MOSFETs along the edge similar way to the power jack and then up along there so do some scoping here see what I can find <clears throat> 